Hey guys, Armored Rogue here. You see me around on the Discord answering questions and being a bit of a busybody. Um, but I shared a few days ago that I want to make some videos sharing how to make new games on Alchemy on a couple of D&D subreddits, specifically r slash D&D, DM Academy, and r slash BTT. Uh, just about it for free assets. But let's look at the universe pages. Um, so I've added all of the free universes that are currently available. And uh, Seeds of Decay, that's one as well. Uh, and I'm planning on putting all these together to uh, make a game that kind of comes from each. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, so to create a game, you go up there, you choose the system that you want for the game. Uh, Currently, you can add a custom universe to a 5th edition game, and that will mess up your game. So if you try adding a character from a custom system to a 5th edition game, it kind of just crashes, so I don't recommend that. Um, so make sure that you're using the edition that you want, the system that you want for that game. Um, so we're going to call this demo. Uh, go to custom. You don't want to go for quick start, because if you go to quick start, and you do you start there um, and then you go over to custom and then you add everything it's going to do a, a, a whoopsie I'll we'll put it that way you see this adding scenes from all these modules so let's go in and oh what do you know uh, we, we have a bunch of scenes already in the game that's not what we want we don't want that um, so let's go back Get rid of that game. Create a new game. Uh, demo again. This time, skip right over quick start. Do not start there. Custom. And then add all of the modules that you want. For this one, we're doing every single module, including the two system list modules, burrow bound and tabletop audio. So, oh, there we go, we're in. Uh, but what's this you see? We have a uh, scene already here. What's this? So this is the base scene that uh, Alchemy just adds in there whenever you have an empty game to let you know what's going on. Um, so it has some really great info over here and the story section for the notes for the scene. Uh, so for this new game, we're going to open up and bring in some content. So, we make sure everything is on. Go to the scenes, add a scene. And then here we can actually sort by the different modules that we have active within the game right now. So what we're going for is Boro Brown. Um, so it's actually right here at the top. And I want to add the Sinking Mountaintop port because I would like to run a game within the... Turn on the music for the moment. I would like to run a game inside of the Humblewood universe, but I don't have the full Humblewood game. So one of the big reasons why I want to run in Humblewood universe is... If I add another player to the game, I'll add my main account. Armored Rogue. So Rogue and Rouge. Rouge is my free account, and Rogue is my main. So we'll add them. Um, so the, the big reason why I want to do a Humblewood campaign is because you can see the Humblewood pre-maids, uh, there's a bunch of them. Uh, the Ruins of Symborium uh, is the other one that has some pre-maids. But they're all level one and there's only four of them so if you are starting a new game as a free dm and you want to have some bunch of pre-mades to look at look at this great list uh ranger cleric bar druid fighter wizard another druid uh and a rogue so a lot of different ones to choose from a bunch of different races so it's a very interesting way to start the game um so uh but What's this you say? You uh, also want to get some of the story from Humblewood to go along with that because Boroughbound, if you look over here in the story section, has its entire own setting going along with it. But we don't want to use that. 
we want to have our own stuff. So what we do is go ahead, add a different scene. This time we're going to filter for Lake Worms Fury. And we're going to add this scene here. Because in this scene, if we go to details, uh, I don't particularly want to use this scene because it's it's not a map. It just shows the four characters. We don't want to use particularly those four characters, and we don't like want to give away what everything's about, uh, especially with the big uh, the wake worm in the background. We want to ease our players into it. Um, so we are going to steal all of these notes uh, and uh, move them over. Details, notes, and da, 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 da. replaced. Look at that. And so now we have this going for us. And so instead of this being Ancora Bay, it is now Salter's Port. Awesome. Uh, so let's go ahead and get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. Uh, go to details. Let's add some stuff. So I wasn't the biggest fan of that music. So let's go ahead and switch that out. Uh, go to background music we're going to okay as you can see here we have everything from tabletop audio there are a ton of great tracks here but one that i specifically want to look for is tavern um mountain tavern would be good because this is technically a mountain top port but the tavern music i think is a better option let's go ahead and look at that. that that sounds great uh, a bit loud but it's fine okay um, let's add a motion effect. Uh, let's go. I find light rays to be great for open areas. Perfect effect. Uh, we could add some background sound and encounter music if we had some, but I don't think anything is going to be quite the perfect fit for this right now. So let's go ahead and change the name to Salter's Port and change the location to. Salt export as well. Uh, well, uh, let's go Humblewood. Since we don't really have to have the same thing in both areas. And let's uh, correct that spelling there. Okay. And look at that. We got a nice motion effect, some light background music. It's good. Um, so, what are a couple of other things that we can add in here? Um, so something that I've been playing around with is uh, handouts. Um, so you saw earlier that I turned on every universe for this game that I currently have. So one universe that I've been working on is called 5e Supplement. That is the only universe I'm allowed to have for my free account. But it is a great place to put the extra information that I have that I want to bring into the game. So uh, one thing that you can see here is that we have a great, wonderful, immersive experience, and we don't really want to pull ourselves or our players outside of this experience during the game. So I created this gameplay cheat sheet here, which is its own article handout and universe. Um, and so this links uh, to several other articles that I made. So this is one universe object within that custom universe. And then I have here embedded four other articles to bring in bite-sized chunks for rules that I think our players will like to use during the game. So here I have basic combat op uh, actions. Uh, so the different things you can do and you can see that I scroll down, there's all these options, but it only scrolls down so far. So if you're familiar with the combat article inside the main 5e resource, the SRD, uh, it's about a lot bigger than this. So you do a lot of scrolling to go from top to bottom. 
So this is something that I recommend to do when you're using embeds is that you bite them up into bite-sized chunks so that you're not scrolling for days to get all the way to the bottom. Also, you can use this helpful scroll bar here. Um, but then we can go back in. We also have making attack. So this is specifically for when making attacks that they are worried about that mechanic. Uh, we have one for ability scores and we have one for conditions. Um, but that's for the players. So how do we get to the players? So we go in, we edit, we go to sharing and we add the players in. So you can flip it on for each of the players that you have in game. Right now I'm plays only one, so we only have one for Twitch. Okay, so how about something for ourselves as DMs? So I have the Elements of Inspirations universe as well, but if you've seen that universe, it is huge uh, because it is based on a deck of cards and that deck of cards has 60 cards in it um, that's a lot of cards so if you try to add scenes from the elements universe let's go ahead and filter that one out it is a great big giant list you don't want to add all those to your game you don't want to sort through all those so what i did i created a nice handy table here uh, where it has uh, a very simple roll table. So you first roll 1d6. Uh, this is all in the Elements universe. And so you either get combat, exploration, or roleplay. And then you roll a d20 to figure out which one of those. And so for each one of these, there are four other options after that. But putting all of that in the same article would be huge, which it is if you've seen that universe. So I've cut them apart into bite-sized chunks of 10 each. So if you know that you are rolling, uh, you rolled a three, so let's say you did exploration, then you roll a seven, so you have to go to miscast spell. You can go to the article for one through 10, scroll down till you hit seven, past it, miscast spell. And then let's say you rolled a three again. Um, so, ooh, fireball, a burning ball of flame lingers in the sky and centering anything nearby. A magical first actually drains warmth from the room it is in. Oh my gosh. And so you can start playing out that scene for your, for your table. This is a great uh, little easy thing. So how did we get those numbers to begin with? Um, so that's where you can go here to create an, a GM action. Let's call this elements of inspiration there i go uh best way i found for this particular thing was to do a command roll and we do three separate rolls uh first 1d6 and then we add another roll and specifically command roll because doing uh, the other type of roll is a bit weird uh, since it has all the other extra stats added on there. I'll show you that rule system in a moment when we look at making an item. So it was 1d6 for that first roll and then 1d20 for that second roll, if you remember. And then it was... So that's the dice roll mechanic. 1d4 for once we actually get to the card that we're using. So, now that we have the action in there, we can go ahead and roll it. Oh, but you see this? It shows up in chat. Anyone can see chat. So my player here now knows what we're going to be looking at. That's not good. So let's edit the game. Scroll down. Private GM rolls. Now, we can be sneaky. Well, we would be able to be sneaky if I actually saved the game. Oh, I did private GM rolls. Let's check this one more time. Uh, let's try to exit the game and come back in. Sometimes things do take a moment to uh, update. Ta-da! Okay, it's in yellow now, so now you know that your players won't be able to see it within their chat. So, for the elements of inspiration, we got a six. 
and see it here. We got six. So it'd be roleplay. It'd be 18. So we'd go to victim. And then we'd head to the article for 11 through 20. And we'd go to three. Mer oh, arson. A building goes up in flames and explodes or brings smoking and or begin smoking intensely. What is the building? Who has set the fire alight? Oh my gosh. Just terrible things happening left and right. Okay. So. Now that we have all of that figured out. We know what GM actions are. We've seen the story. We've seen the handouts. Let's look at actual characters for a moment. Let's go ahead and add a uh, character in. Let's go for this wonderful wizard here. Ooh, okay. Uh, we're now playing this wizard because you can play as any of your characters who you add to the game. Um, but you see this? This action window? It's empty. Why is the action empty window empty? Um, well, the skills section is where you have all your basic roles. You're able to do a strength check or save. You're able to do a skill check. Things like that. But what you really want here is the equipment so you can turn this on so that you can actually hit things. Um, let's go ahead and add an item that we can actually use as none of these seem to be weapons. Let's go for a staff. Every wizard needs a staff. A uh, staff of thunder and lightning. Doesn't that sound powerful? Okay, so staff of thunder and lightning. But still, still no actions. That's because we actually have to equip the item. So we go ahead and hit this lucky button. And what do you know? It? We have attacks. But what do you see? The, this, this does not look like a very sophisticated, sophisticated attack for a weapon that sounds so awesome. What's going on here? Um, so let's look at the actual weapon. And so it has a great description of all this awesome stuff that it can do, but none of it's actually in the game. Uh, let's take a look at that. So it comes with the basic actions of just whacking people. Uh, so this is probably going to be common for some of the older uh systems that were brought into alchemy where they didn't really have time to ingest everything properly and make all the actions and stuff for the items so you'll have to make these on your own so you can see all these uh stats for the item it's magic it's very rare major things like that uh any prerequisites you might have for a, t a tuning uh, is it consumable no you don't consume a staff that are you a trade person um, you can also put a cost there if you need to. Um, but what we want here is to look at one of the actions for attacking. So let's go with lightning. Uh, when you hit something with a melee attack using the staff, you cause the target to take extra 2d6 lightning damage. So these effects seem to be at will rather than all the time. So we can keep these two attack actions, but add something on top of it. So, let's go in and look at one of these actions look like as a base. So, we use a strength modifier, of course, plus two bonus. <clears throat> For the uh, proficiency and critical, that's 20. Perfectly normal. Uh, roll 1d6 for damage, plus two for your strength bonus, bludgeoning, etc. Okay. So let's go ahead and modify this to add the lightning damage on top because I don't want to go through and put all this back in again. Uh, so let's add some damage. Uh, 2d6. Uh, it didn't specify an ability, so let's skip over those. It didn't specify a bonus. Um, so let's go straight for a lightning damage. Okay, we're good. Uh, let's rename this one-handed attack of lightning if I can spell this light nig no 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 lightning yeah close enough all right 
And so you cause it to take the extra two d6. Let's go ahead and try that action now. Uh, attack of lightning. Let's go ahead and roll. And so you can see here <coughs> that it does two bludgeoning damage and three lightning damage. You actually do have to go in to see the different types of damage as it rolls it and adds it all together uh, as a blanket statement. So if you are uh, playing a character that is weak or susceptible to a particular kind, you want to check that out and make sure you're getting the right number. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the NPCs. So uh, the SRD is in here, but let's look at the system specific NPCs that we have going on. So we got a wide range here in the Plaguewood Spider. So let's bring in ooh, this, this big bad guy. Uh, let's bring in some Plague Fungus, a Rot Squirrel. Oh my gosh. Okay. So we got all these bad guys. And we have this one good guy. So what do we do with them? Uh, we can throw them on the campaign map. So one of the reasons why I wanted to use this scene was because... Look at this! Great, beautiful map in here already. And this particular map also has different phases. So uh, it's too bright, you don't want to be in the daytime. You can be in the nighttime instead. Look at that. Nice, dark, shady place to interact with. Let's go ahead and throw on a token. Right now, the tokens just kind of pop up in the, the general area of what you're looking at. Um, so it's good that it showed up in a visible position. So we can go ahead and add a bad guy here as well. But, oh, look at this. It's hidden. It's a giant monster standing right next to our hero, but they can't be seen. It's going to sneak up on them. And then we can go ahead and show that character and poof on the map this giant evil bad guy just standing over our hero they're surprised let's go ahead and start rolling initiative uh, so that rolls initiative for the bad guy and it rolls uh, for all your NPCs automatically um, I believe that it doesn't do it automatically for our characters so they would have to make an independent roll uh, wherever that may be uh, initiative. How do we roll initiative? Well, it's in there somewhere. It's been a while since I've actually run a game. Anyways. That covers what starting a campaign looks like and what creating one looks like and some of the things that you're able to do with the alchemy system. Um, yeah. So let me know what you'd like to see focus on more, what you think is most important, and what you think I'm missing from this tutorial to get you started in alchemy. Um, yeah, just give me your thoughts and shoot me a link. Have a great day, guys. I hope to see you in game.